The next two are actually police union contracts, uh, which I found, by the way, Mr. LeBranch, the video snippet on this, which is five minutes, has actually got some interesting commentary from uh, Jamie Sullivan. So, if there's no objection, I'd like to play that. It's five minutes long. I would like to hear yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. These contracts we are going to talk about later. Uh, actually, the board has already approved the article to go in. Mm -hmm. You've approved the concept and, and yep. you've endorsed the article. So, yeah. I would assume that the board would approve these two articles. Make a motion to approve the Two articles. Police article. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Yeah, I just would like okay. to say what the, I have the schedule here of what the right. amounts are. So these are for the Sergeant Police contract and the Patrolman Police mm -hmm. contract. So the tax effect for the 2019-39 weeks would be 21275 and for the Patrolman Police contract for 39 weeks would be 80000 204. Okay, so I would uh, just want to make those numbers mm -hmm. and uh, I am ready to vote. Yeah, uh, just so everybody knows, the first one is, is six tenths of a cent and the second one is 2.4 cents per thousand. Yeah. Thank you. We have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Just as a matter of disclosure, that was the vote that was made later on in the meeting. They had uh, Jamie Sullivan come in and describe the tentative agreement. Okay, which is what's going to follow at this point. I should clarify for the public that the contracts begin on April 1st of each year. Yes. So the first year is a nine-month contract. Um, you know, we've, we've talked before. Um, we're now at that point where we have uh, signed a tentative agreement with the HPA. We're here for the board to officially approve that and move it to the warrant. Uh, I understand you already discussed that a little earlier. Um, but to go over the TA, um, what we have is, <coughs> excuse me, Several language changes, um, but the cost items are um, related to the insurance. Uh, the, there's been an agreement uh, to move from the, the prescription plan that they're on to another prescription plan. You'll recall um, this has been an issue that's been out there for a period of time. Um, the plan that the HPA is currently on is no longer offered. The other unions have all moved to the new prescription plan. We're doing the same thing with the HPA that we've done with everybody else. Globally, that plan actually saves both parties, them and us, money. We've put a pool of money in there to help offset a transitional period, um, and uh, that's a, a cost item. Uh, the other issues are uh, details, the request to increase the detail pay. Uh, regular details now will move from, I think it's $35 to $40, or the officer's overtime rate, whichever is higher, and it's been an increase in the alcohol detail rate, so that is if you work in a bar or a detail where there's alcohol served, there's an additional sum of money that's added. That's been increased as well to an $8 per hour additional for those. They're, they're relatively infrequent, but they are situations where there is uh, mm -hmm. they're usually uh, a higher risk or risk. problem for the officers yeah. they're dealing with. Thanks, Craig. Um, uh, with the wages, it's a three-year deal for 2.8, 2.8, 2.8. Within there also is an adjustment to the starting wage to the patrolman and an adjustment to the starting wage of the sergeant, so a first-year sergeant or first-year patrolman. There's been an adjustment in those wages. Patrolman, obviously, to be more competitive with some of the area or the places we're around. With the sergeants, we made an adjustment because there was a deficiency uh, in the prior contracts, the way things went, where there were circumstances where there was a sergeant supervisor who was making less money than a a patrol officer that they were supervising. So we've corrected that to, to deal with that deficiency. Really, that's that's the extent of it. Um, be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Good. Go ahead. I just want to say I was part of the <coughs> negotiations team this year, and I think it went really well. We had a couple back and forths, and I think the assistant town manager did a very good job, and I'm glad. Good team. Yeah, good team on both sides. I hope that we can get this passed to our police department. It's very Agreed. important. I mean, when you talk about the increase in the detail, that the, the bar would be paying that, right? Correct. Those are private details that are paid by <coughs> outside folks. Right. Yes. That's where that increase is coming. So that's correct. The yes. employer yeah. picks up the tab. 
Any other questions? And we're talking two separate articles, one for the patrolman and one for the <coughs> sergeant. Yes, and the changes are the same. There's just a different, in each of those two mm -hmm. contracts, there's a different article number that's yep. uh, identified in here. Uh, the costing items, uh, I understand you went through that earlier, so you're aware of the costing items. Um, we've gone through that. You have the warrant article, so uh, I would ask the board to give us a vote. I made a motion that we uh, accept the contract. Senator Grant. Senator Grant, yeah. Red. For both the, the patrolman and the sergeant chief? Yeah. I'll second. All right. Is that? Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a vote to ratify. A vote to ratify. Okay. So all those in favor? Four. So we're taking the vote on both contracts. Correct. Just to clarify. Correct. Yep. And now that's another thing that we'll have Rick come in tomorrow to see if he can. So yes. Okay. Okay. Mr. LeBranch. I'd be very comfortable to move and recommend this foreign article. Is there a second? No. I'll second that. Discussion. Yes. Tomorrow. Um, from my point of view, I think there's a lot of things lacking in reference to describing to me and to the public what goes on. I can understand that they want an increase, but it says estimate increase, and I don't know about it, over previous year's level. So what was the previous year's level? I don't know. Increase uh, regarding what? They have estimated increase uh, 2019, 39 weeks, 21,275. Oh, that's increase over the existing contract. Right. Okay. They're looking for a 2.8% increase. They, uh, Frank, that's the stipe I'm looking for. So my question that is. That is the answer. My question is if it's over the previous level, why don't we put the level here what it was before they want this increase so we can understand where because they're coming from? Because it's not required by law. What is required by law is to sandbernize uh, these war multi-year warrant article or contracts, right. and that's what a sandbernization looks like. I'm asking for the, in order for like the prior thing we talked about. I cannot give you the answer to what the current contract calls for. I understand you can't, right. but uh, you're asking me what I want, and I'm asking for you or us to be able to get it. If you're going to talk about stuff, I need to know what the prior salary was so I can understand what effect that 2.7 is means 21,275. Got it. There was a cost before. Got it. So my question is, can we get that information? I would suggest we get that. Okay, thank you. Anything else? So we can get that. And my next question is, <clears throat> for me to understand it better, because I'm a little confused, is the 30 in 2020 when it says 52 weeks? Is that 32,000 on top of the 21,000? I assume it is. Is that correct or not correct? Yeah. That's the annual effect yeah. next year. Yeah. So, so that's a new one. So they. So this the, is only going to be 39 weeks because right. it doesn't start till April. Correct. First. I got that. I got and that. so that's going to be so it's going to be 21,000 tax effect for 19. Right. And, and then, then the next year is 32, 32 on top of that. Right. And along that, year. that's 27,000 on top of that. Right. right. That's yeah. correct. Yes. Okay. Mr. Frank. Yes. Uh, well, I, I want to uh, say that I think a 2.8% increase is very modest, considering that the uh, Social Security increase CPI was 2.85. So that's in line with what the CPI is. So I, I don't have a problem with giving a police officer a 2.8% increase. Anybody else? Overall. Yeah, I. Mr. Morberg. Um, I'm not ready to vote tonight on this. Um, when we put contracts together for several years, we just didn't come in on the first meeting. And you know, I watched uh, the assistant town manager's presentation, if that's what you want to call it, for two and a half minutes. It wasn't five minutes. I have more questions, like Mr. Mara does. I don't want us to get into a situation that, and and as and everybody is well aware in this community how supportive I've been of town employee contracts. I have a proven record of it, so we can get that right at the table. But to David's point again, you know, we've had several default budgets in several years. We've had many things that haven't passed. The firefighters themselves had to wait two or three years. I, I really think that we need to sit back, digest this, revisit this, you know, and for David's point, for instance, on the sergeant's contract, how many sergeants are we talking about? This is 87,000 over, over three years, and we understand the 39 weeks. And the patrolman's is higher, obviously, because you have more patrolmen. But I think it's, it's to, to just all of a sudden say, you know, and, and we may all do that eventually, but I think personally I'd like to just 
continue to think about it. We got these Warren articles. I, I still have some questions in my mind, but it, it's to the will of the Budget Committee what they want to do tonight. I personally am not ready to vote, but I, I think we have to be very careful. We go through these for the first time, and we got a lot, millions of dollars on here. It just, I think the public wants us to really make sure we're recommending the right things or not based on stuff. So that's, that's where I'm at, whether it's pro or con. Mr. Morrow. I'm going to add a point of clarity. I didn't think we was going to vote for the war. Right, that's what I tonight. thought, too. We were supposed to research, understand them, and talk about that's them. That's correct. So we, and then ask questions what we need until we make the decision in January. Right. That was my understanding. I'm not voting on anything tonight. Thank you. Anybody else? That was my understanding. Regina. I'd like to uh, extend on what Mr. Warburton said. The articles that are presented to us tonight, the money water right. articles, the potential tax effect obviously excluding the ones that are coming from the unassigned fund balance, is $2,127.51. <coughs> uh, $2,127.051. I don't have the Warren articles with me, but I've read them several times, and they're all right here. So, yeah, I was under the impression that we were just going to be having a discussion on them tonight, and then on the 3rd, I think, is our next yeah. meeting. Right. We could do the votes Thank if we you. were ready. Yes. Any, anybody else want to speak to the union contract? I okay, I have a couple of uh, points. Um, during Jamie Sullivan's presentation, he referred to a change in the subscription, uh, prescription the plan, the prescription plan, yeah. and um, how that saves a ton of money, right. while simultaneously saying that there are costs that are associated with that. And I don't quite understand if it's saving us money, why is it costing us money? Uh, there may be a good reason for it, but I don't know the answer to that. And the other one was the increase in detail wages that are actually paid to the patrolmen. Um, well, it may be a good thing. I mean, I guess there are two wage increases. One is just general detail wage are going to be increased. And then there's one for details uh, related to where anytime there's a alcohol being served in the venue, then they're going to get still more money on top of the otherwise just increased one. Um, and so you know, that is not reflected here in the sanbernization because that's being paid out of the detail fund, let's say. And if I could and add... The well, no, we can't yet. And the, de the detail fund is... got a warrant article out, which we'll be discussing soon. Uh, to increase the uh, amount of money we charge for renting out our cops, basically. Um, but apparently this tentative agreement assumes that that has already been approved and we have, it'll have no ill effects since we're having this extra revenue, but that's an assumption of how, how the voters are going to vote, and I'm, I'm, I have a problem question in that area. Uh, so those are the two main things that jumped mm -hmm. out at me. Uh, who wants to now speak? Mr. Walberg. Uh, once again, uh, as my old radio days, good segue, Mr. Chairman, because you are absolutely correct again. There are things that, that was said, said at the Slackman's meeting by town management that really is totally separate from these two contracts. And one of the comments was made, quote, the detail pay rate will go from $35 to $40 an hour or the officer overtime rate, whichever is higher. That is the key point because we're not talking about just patrolmen and sergeants. Well, if and, I could make a point of clarification. And that's what I'm... That particular statement yeah. has already been true. Correct. It's but just that shouldn't have been part... What I'm saying is this whole thing is part and parcel of a bigger subject discussion we're having on this whole detail thing, yeah, which yeah, we yeah. brought up. So I, this is why David's point is well taken. We're going to get this discussion going and talk further. But, um, you know, I, I, I appreciate what you said. So thank you. And yeah, Ms. LeBaron. I must have missed the memo. Uh, you know, in, in, in my memory of being on this committee for a number of years, we would, I might be wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong. Cross this question, Mr. LeBrand. It seems like we used to do the Warren articles and there would be a room full of people mm -hmm. here, department heads, mm -hmm. anybody that had any Perhaps the uh, planning board would be here to explain these yeah. mm -hmm. Warren articles. Mm -hmm. So this year, obviously nobody's here. I don't know if they weren't invited or if 
Well, so what it's a happened? process question. Let me answer the process yeah, question. So, so I, but I wasn't aware. I didn't get any memo that, to explain to me that we weren't going to be voting tonight. I had no idea we were just going to sit around and chat about We haven't made any decision to vote or not vote. What I, somebody what, no, what I have to me been, that it was. What I had suggested at the beginning of this discussion is that if there are outstanding questions or issues that we want someone in management, for example, to address before we vote, if any one of us do, then we should probably delay the vote until they come in. Okay? But if we run across a Warren article in which we don't have any outstanding questions, there's no reason not to vote tonight. Okay? And what I'm hearing is there are questions and issues among some of the members on this Warren article, on the two Warren articles representing union contracts, that warrant a delay in the vote. I don't have a problem with that, but okay. I thought I heard somebody say, we're not here to vote well, at least tonight. I don't, I, don't, I don't subscribe to that theory. Okay, I'm just trying to clarify. Because there are some more articles I, that I are just pro forma, we're going to probably vote on them, because we're not going to have any questions. Maybe you can identify those as, I like, will as, as soon they as we come get up. To them. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Moore. I think we ought to go back to looking at our last meeting, maybe on, on thing. It was stated we're here to chit chat about them, and we need to learn and understand them. And that has a very clear description to me that we were not going to vote on them. We were going to discuss them. Well, we're not going to vote on this one or the next All one. All of contract. them is what yeah. I'm saying. That was my understanding. Was that your understanding, Brian? To uh, pretty Anderson? much, yeah. That was my understanding. Because in the past, what we've done, and I disagree with, for last year and the year before, we'd go to a meeting like this and would vote for it in October and pass it. And then last year we couldn't go back and change anything because we had voted for it in two months before and we had all the information. And I think it's about time we get all the information so we understand it better, so that people watching this understand it better, <coughs> and then we make a more intelligent decision with the pure facts, whatever they may be. You know, David. That's all. We're, we're in violent agreement. I'm only saying that <coughs> we can take a vote on any Warren article in which nobody has any questions everyone's comfortable with. We want to, we'll run across one or two or three or four of those. And if we do, we should vote on it now and get it off the table and be done with it. All right? But for those that we have you know, substantial questions for, uh, we ought to delay the vote until we can get them answered. So I think we're in violent agreement, David. Okay? May I ask a question on top of that? Sure. Being violent agreement. <clears throat> you, as the chairman, are going to proceed to contact or or get the answers to the questions we're acting. Don't we need to have an agenda on who's going to do what or how we're going to do it? I would assume it would be the chairman's <coughs> role. Okay. But we need somebody to come back, process, which you've done before. Another process question, which I'll address. Please. As I was dealing with the protocol way back in the spring, uh, discussing what's going to happen in terms of making sure we have the people in here at the right time and all that sort of stuff. And it was decided by Tom Manager and Christina that the best way to approach that would be to keep the keep a schedule refresh and, and keep Christina uh, notified whenever the schedule changes, which I have done, and that she would notify the appropriate personnel that are affected by those changes. Okay? And that has been taking place. What happened when we had our last meeting and we decided to have our meeting on December 26 was like the next day uh, when I informed uh, Christina of the change in the schedule. I got an email from, uh, um, I think, uh, Chris at DPW saying he wouldn't be available for the 26th. Uh, so obviously that suggested to me that Christina was doing her job and she alerted them to what's happening. And I subsequently got other people like Jason Bashan who said, well, I can't make it on the 26th either. Um, and other people, Christy, was subsequently followed yesterday or Monday actually, and Tom Manager as well. So they all informed me they couldn't come, those individuals. Uh, so there you go. I, I will affect a, a change in the schedule um, to reflect the individual warrant articles that we haven't voted on, perhaps. Or I'll somehow communicate that to Christina so that she can dutifully notify the appropriate personnel. I hope that addresses your process question. To a degree. Are you done? No. Oh, okay. I just want to be clear because looking for you to get the information and if the people come here 
but where it might be a question. If the people come here in J January 3rd, pretend that's the date and we make it and all this is not snowed out, and they start giving some of the answers, but we still have questions. If we had the answers we'll still have time to delay. we could review them the same way as we do them. We'll still have time to delay on the 3rd. Okay, that's all I okay. need to know. Thank you, sir. Mr. LeBranch. I would like to withdraw my motion that's on the floor. Okay, fine. The motion is non-existent, uh, Barbara. Any other thoughts on the union contracts? Next is the other union contract, which we're going to treat exactly the same, right? Just as the selectman did. So next 